Hello, this is an introduction to using pseudo-spectral methods. Uh, these are really powerful methods, but they can be kind of hard to learn and understand. And so this introduction has lots of examples and details to hopefully help you start uh, both understand them and uh, use these, uh, these great methods. So um, we're going to apply these to the solution of partial differential equations, and we'll consider periodic domains using Fourier series and non-periodic domains using Chebyshev series. Um, we'll consider examples in both one and two spatial dimensions. And then uh, per boundary conditions are obviously periodic for the Fourier series. And then for uh, the non-periodic domains, we'll use Dirichlet, Neumann, or Robin conditions. So the, for example, the PDE that we might be interested in is the conservation law for a scalar u. u is a function of time and position and is given by this uh, equation where we have the divergence of a scalar flux where the flux is given by minus uh, diffusivity gamma times the gradient of the scalar plus a source term. If the diffusivity is a function of the scalar u, then we have a nonlinear problem. Or if the source term is a nonlinear function of u, then it's nonlinear. And one of the benefits of pseudospectral methods is that they can treat nonlinearity uh, really simply without having to do anything special. So in spectral methods, we're going to represent our function u of at, uh, t and x as a linear combination of basis functions. And that's represented here, where phi n are our basis functions, and these are functions only of space, while they, um, uh, the multipliers cn of t, these are coefficients which can depend on time. So we have a linear combination of these basis functions where the cn are the coefficients of this linear combination, and we sum up over a finite number of these basis functions. So in general, for a continuous um, function u, we would need an infinite number of terms in this summation. And so when we do the sum here over a finite number of um, terms, big N, we have a truncation error associated with this. Um, and we'll, have, we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go along. So for periodic domains, we have uh, domain length L and uh, the, the um, basis functions will have period L. And we, we denote our basis functions phi n here as e to the 2 pi i n x over L. And we'll refer to these as Fourier modes. Through Euler's identity, um, this e to the 2 pi i n x over L is a combination of sines and cosines. And we'll describe those in some more detail as we go along. For non-periodic domains, um, our domain will go from uh, minus 1 to 1, and our basis functions will be Chebyshev polynomials of the first kind. So other basis functions are possible and are used for methods like the finite element method and Galerkin methods. In the finite element method, um, the basis functions are local in the sense that they're only non-zero around a given grid point. Um, Spectral and pseudo-spectral methods use global basis functions that span the whole domain, and this contributes to the high accuracy and the high convergence rates of these methods. So these are the ones that we'll focus on here, and this results in exponential convergence rate with the number of terms, and also gives us um, uh, perfect accuracy when we evaluate derivatives subject to uh, the, the truncation of the series. Um, that's in stark contrast to finite difference methods, and we'll compare finite um, difference methods to uh, spectral methods in some of the examples. So in the pseudo-spectral method, to summarize how the method works, um, the coefficients cn are evaluated by requiring that the scalar function u of t and x satisfy the partial differential equation at n discrete grid points called collocation points or interpolation points. Sometimes the method is also called the collocation method. This is in contrast to um, spectral methods that have a little bit different um, representation for how the coefficients cn are evaluated. 
So the important thing in the pseudospectral method is that we make sure that u satisfies the PDE at n specific points as opposed to some uh, other global measure. Um, the collocation points will denote those as xj for some j goes from 0 to n minus 1, so these are points on the domain. And we'll just denote uj as u evaluated at xj. Similarly for the diffusivities gamma and s, gamma j and sj are just the diffusivity and source term evaluated at the corresponding grid location. So the um, <clears throat> discrete version of our um, linear combination of basis functions evaluated at grid points is just uj uh, is the linear combination of the basis functions evaluated at points j. And so we'll relate this <clears throat> to the discrete Fourier or cosine transforms and its inverses. And we'll also do this for, um, for the uh, Chebyshev basis functions. So um, we use this equation to evaluate accurate spatial der derivatives at collocation points. So the whole name of the game with the pseudospectral method is really to get high order approximations to the derivative terms that appear in this equation. Otherwise, we're discretizing the equation, so you can see we have uj at specific grid points. We're basically going to solve this ODE, uh, this PDE at each grid point, <clears throat> and by discretizing it <clears throat> as we've done at the specific grid points, we can solve this by advancing in time using the method of lines, and we use the spectral method to evaluate these derivatives um, and do so in a, in a manner that's high order. So once we know the derivatives at the grid points, we can step the solution in time to evolve u at each grid point and at each time. And that's really everything we're going to talk about, <clears throat> for the most part, is related to evaluating the derivatives here and doing it in, a, in an accurate way. If we were using finite difference method, we'd still have a grid and we'd still have these grid points. We'd just use finite difference approximations to evaluate the derivatives at each point. And so you can, if you have an existing finite difference code, you can turn it into a spectral code with really minimal effort just by changing the way that you evaluate the derivatives. And that should be clear as we look at some of the examples. Okay, so this ends our first um, presentation, and we'll pick this up in the next video.